In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a virtual museum in PowerPoint. A virtual museum uh, is a tool that you can use in PowerPoint as an instructor or an assignment that you can give to your students uh, to give them a creative way to express uh, the information that they've learned and to present it to the class. Um, the idea is instead of having a linear PowerPoint just slide after slide after slide you want to give students a creative outlet to express themselves or if this is a tool that the instructor is providing for the students you want to be able to let students explore the information on their own similar to what they would be able to do in a real museum and so this is just one way that our museum might look uh, we'll add some details to it but first we just want to get an idea about how it is that I created this museum and it's really easy we're basically going to use a series of rectangles and trapezoids and some triangles to create the idea of this room and then we'll add some details to it so I'm just going to go to a new slide and um, I'm going to clear everything off of my slide. I can just select Control A and delete everything or I could choose to insert a blank slide. And I'm going to be using uh, most of my shape tools. Uh, you may see them on your home area or if you are in a previous version of PowerPoint you may need to go to insert and uh, select shapes and then you can get to your shape tools there. I'm going to start with the rectangle shape and I'm just going to make a relatively narrow rectangle here okay and I've got mine a little bit closer to the top of my slide than it is to the bottom um, but it just depends on the look that you're aiming for as to how you will place these exactly okay now that I have this um, rectangular slide I'm going to add to it a trapezoid so I'll go back to my shapes and I'm going to select the trapezoid and I'm going to draw it out the trapezoids always come out uh, with I guess we'd say the base on the bottom and uh, the smaller or shorter side on top but I'm going to take this and use the green circle if I hover over it and click and hold I can rotate uh, this uh, trapezoid or if I don't like that then on my drawing tools I can uh, select rotate and then have it rotate 90 degrees and so that way I'll know it's exactly right so I'm going to move this wall or trapezoid um, so that it's flush against the first shape our rectangle and so you can already see that our room is starting to get some depth and we can play with that a little bit uh, to get it exactly where we want it to be okay and depending on what you want to look for or how you want this want this to be um, we can use this diamond to really kind of uh, control the sharpness of our trapezoid and its angles and so by doing this on my on the diamond dragging it up or down I can make this wall look deeper or uh, less deep depending on what it is I'm going for so I'm gonna leave it like that for now and then my next shape would be another rectangle but this one I'm gonna make a little wider because it's gonna be a back wall okay so it looks something like this okay and I'm just using my arrow tools to kinda nudge these things around um, you know or maybe I need to just bring my wall up a little bit so that uh, it kind of meets up it's not important that it be perfect but we do want it to be close uh, when we put in our floor and our ceiling it'll cover up any errors that we might have okay and I can uh, I'm gonna push this wall in a little bit and then still bring it down a little so that we'll have enough space for our other walls
Okay, there we are. All right, so now I'm going to put in another trapezoid over in this area. Uh, it'll be the wall that's opposite this one. And if I want to, I can either do the trapezoid again, which is easy enough, or I can copy this wall and I'm going to paste it by doing control V and I'm going to go to my range area and I'm going to let this flip horizontally so it kind of gives me the matching wall um, gives me some of the depth and really you know if I want it to match exactly then there's not a lot of editing that I have to do the, to this and then um, so that I can have a little more wall over here see what I'm going to do. I'm going to push this in a little bit. That's enough. I'm going to bring it down some. That's good. Bring it up a little bit. That works. Okay, and then we'll put in one last rectangle. Alright, and so that gives us some idea about our room. We can use um, our shift key to select all of the different shapes and I'm going to go ahead and give them some color. Uh, I've picked this kind of beige color and I've also got something uh, in that same family for the, the uh, lines or my outlines for my shape nothing too drastic but just something to kind of help us see where the changes in direction are happening with our walls. Now the next thing I'm going to do is put in my floor and my ceiling and to do that my floor and ceiling are both just rectangles. So I'll take a rectangle and I want to make sure that I cover all of the white space on the bottom of my slide. Alright so just make sure it covers everything and you can choose whichever color you want um, but there are some nice patterns or textures PowerPoint calls them and so you could choose to add some of these textures some of them kinda look like a little bit like hardwood floor or maybe a little bit like carpet it's just really kind of up to you what you want to use in your museum but I like the uh, hardwood floors and right now it's on top of my walls I need it to really go behind the wall and so to do this we'll use the arrange tool and we're going to send it to the back and that way our floor goes to the back of the shapes and it looks like it is in the floor of our museum we'll do the same thing with our ceiling it's just a rectangle we want to make sure that we cover all of our white spaces and um, I'm going to fill it with this brown shape again but then I'm going to give it a little gradient uh, that's just the variations in the light and let's see let's try that and then we're gonna we're gonna send it to the back and so now we've got the ceiling for our museum and I'm just going to give you a little quick look at what this looks like okay when we hit uh, shift F5 and this might be a little bit larger than our viewing area but I think you get uh, the main idea that we really have this idea of a room and so what we'll do next is add some elements uh, to the room so that our uh, visitors can explore and uh, get access to our information in various ways